Hi everyone, my name is Molly Hampton and I'm the Global Marketing Manager for Hot Wheels Entertainment and I am back today as your moderator for the second San Diego Comic-Con at home Hot Wheels panel. Today I am joined by five huge San Diego Comic-Con fans that also happen to be designers and marketers. But what do we have in store for you all today? Well, first, we'll be taking a look at this year's Hot Wheels Comic-Con exclusives, giving you all a sneak peek of what's to come in the world of Hot Wheels. And finally, we'll be answering some of the fans' most important questions that we have collected straight from the Hot Wheels channel. So before we get started, let's take a moment to introduce these guys. Matt, why don't you start? My name is Matt Brutico. I am the Vice President of Global Marketing for Hot Wheels, and I just realized this is actually my 10th Comic-Con uh, with Mattel. Uh, so congratulations to me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Brian? <laughs> awesome. I'm Brian Benedict. I'm the uh, design director for uh, Diecast Vehicles, and I'm really excited to be here. I love Comic-Con. I, uh, I'm so sad that uh, yet again, uh, not there in person, but uh, looking forward to getting back for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Oh, hi, Chris. I'm uh, Chris Colangelo. I'm the manager for product design for License Entertainment. Uh, this is like, I think my fourth, fourth Comic-Con kind of taking the charge here. Um, I love it. Love Comic-Con. You know, we do it for you guys and I hope you like everything. My name is Matt Gabe. I'm a lead packaging graphic designer for Hot Wheels. Uh, this is my first time doing a Comic-Con with Mattel and I did not get the memo about wearing a black shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sam. I'm the uh, package designer for the Hot Wheels License Entertainment. Uh, I've been here at Mattel for close to 10 years now and I was assigned to work on Comic-Con exclusive for the past six years or so. And although challenging, uh, I had a blast working on all of them and hopefully for many years to come. <laughs> Back to you, Molly. All right, thanks so much. Okay, so now let's dive into why we are here today, which is Comic-Con exclusives. Every year, Hot Wheels brings you the coolest and most sought after vehicles in the pop culture landscape, and today is no different. So let's kick it off with the bang, Masters of the Universe. Matt, I know you are just chomping at the bit to get into this one, so I'm going to pass it over to you. Yes, so Masters of the Universe, or MOTU, as cool people call it, uh, you know, was created by Mattel back in the early 80s or late 70s is when it was created. And it is so ingrained into our company. I am certainly one of the many, many people in Mattel who grew up loving my He-Man guys, as I called them. And the way I knew what Mattel was is it was the little logo on the on the packaging of, of all of my He-Man uh, toys that I asked for for every Christmas and every birthday. Um, and so a lot of you know, there's a, a history of, of this uh, brand. It was brought back in the early 2000s. It was actually brought back again in a purely collector form um, in 2008. And that was actually uh, my first project when I first worked at Mattel as an intern was, was on uh, Masters Universe Classics at Comic-Con. Uh, maybe I saw some of you there. Now it's, it's a completely different world. We are relaunching Masters of the Universe um, as a full franchise, um, not just for kids and not just for adults, but really thinking about both, um, both groups of people because there's a lot of adults like me who just want to relive my childhood every single day with He-Man. Um, but we know that kids are gonna love uh, these characters if we update them. So I think everyone knows there's kind of two versions of He-Man coming. Uh, there's uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation, uh, which is yeah. at the time this launches, like just coming out on Netflix. And that's a reimagining of the classic He-Man uh, from Kevin Smith. Um, but then there's gonna be a new kid uh, targeted version of He-Man that really reimagines the character for the future. And for Comic-Con, obviously, we are uh, honoring the original iteration of He-Man that, that Revelations uh, uh, celebrates. Um, and it really is those classic He-Man toys uh, that a lot of us grew up with, but done as Hot Wheels vehicles. And uh, we've done the Wind Raider and we've done the uh, Land Shark in Hot Wheels before. But the first time ever for Comic-Con, we have a two-pack of them, including Little He-Man and little Skeletor figures uh, <laughs> piloting them. I'll let you guess which one comes with which, but it's a super awesome two-pack. Believe it or not, we are actually going to launch it last year uh, mm -hmm. at Comic-Con, um, but uh, due to COVID and uh, the many changes that have happened in the world in the last year, uh, we decided to delay it until this year 
uh, when, uh, so, so we've been working on this one for a very long time and we're really excited for it to finally come out. Awesome, yeah. Well, and Matt, they don't actually have to guess because we are lucky enough to have Chris who has the product in hand to show everybody. So Chris, if you wanna walk us through the product, that would be great. Oh, here it goes, oh, the reveal. <laughs> All right, yeah, so. You forgot the curtains. <laughs> Here, here we go. I'll show you guys the first sneak peek at this one. So here you see the He-Man and, and the Wind Raider and Skeletor and a Land Shark comes in a sweet two-pack. Um, nod to the you know OG graphics on top. Sam Cock did an awesome job to kind of bringing it back to what the original packaging looked like. Um, but I'm going to do something that you're probably all going to hate. I'm going to open it. You're going to open it. Oh, oh no. 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 Not my packaging. <laughs> it's happening. Not meant to be opened. I know. This is the <laughs> value. Just you went. better have an extra one. Opa. But, oh man oh man i'm getting goosebumps i hate when yeah. people open the package right, let's start with he-man there he is so a uh, cool thing for for this what we actually did was we tried to keep it as true to the toy as possible so on the he-man figure itself um a lot of the parting lines are still there so like if you look on his back you can kind of see where the arm parting lines are the neck parting lines are we kept it almost 100% uh, true to the action figure. We want it to be as uh, as much as a replica of the toy as possible. So you can see him here driving the sweet run raider. Um, have the uh, moving gun on top, the wings move as well, but it's really cool. Uh, Mant and Chung, our in-house expert sculptor did a really good job on this one. And then I'll show so you. Can I, can I point something out really quick? In any normal year, we would have all seen these before. I have never been in the same room as this toy, <laughs> yeah. so I'm like staring into my screen to be able to see it closely. Um, we are all in different places talking to you, but um, anyway, I probably seeing it for the first time. I am seeing this uh, in detail for the first time too, and yeah. it looks so great. He's pretty awesome. All right, so that's the event, and then I'll show you uh, Skeletor. Again, we want it to be as true to the toy as possible. So you can see it here. Here is Skeletor and the Land Shark. He's super cool. Again, it's got all the parting lines in the figure, just like the actual toy did from the 80s. So it's pretty accurate to the original toy. Uh, Land Shark's mouth actually goes up and down, which again, yes. <laughs> you have the, the one without Skeletor, and you already know that. The guns move up and down. You can see here. Um, and again, trying to stay close to the toy, our in-house graphic guy, Mary Bedoy, actually painstakingly recreated the, the labels that were on the actual uh, big version. So the small version here has the exact same labels as the, ex the classic toy that everybody loves. But yeah, so here they are. Matt, they want to be on your shelf so bad fighting each other, just like this. Uh, yeah. Human and Skeletor. We're really excited about these. They came out awesome. I think... I think uh, they really uh, pay tribute to the to the OG He Man, and there's you know there's so much detail on those. They look bigger than they actually are. Those are the size of Hot Wheels cars, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the one sixty fourth scale, I guess they they're uh, pretty close to to a regular uh, Hot Wheels car. But He Man and Skeletor are bigger than life already, so they're kind of not the right size of a human. But yeah, this is what their their proportions are from the toy. Awesome, those look great. Yeah, yeah so to Chris's point, um, it comes and Matt. Obviously, it comes in a two pack um, in that really cool blister um, execution with the awesome uh, graphics done by none other than Sam Cox. So thank you so much, Sam. You're welcome. Actually, can I uh, can I talk a little bit about the packaging? Of course. I want to give a shout out to one of the illustrators. So basically, when we did the uh, packaging, uh, we want to make sure that it pays tribute to the original He-Man uh, packaging. So we did all the same angles and everything. But uh, for me to collect assets, uh, I have to look for a different group because back then, all the He-Man uh, illustrations was done on canvas. So you have to scan them digitally. You know, you have to put the whole canvas in the scan and then. So it's not something that we can get like on file when we go through folder or anything. So that was pretty interesting. So we have a, a illustrator that helped us out. Uh, his name, you know, his Iman O. Dominique. Hopefully I pronounced his name correctly. But he is a diehard He-Man fan, so he could not wait to work on it. So when I gave it to him, he was like extremely happy to redraw it, you know, to recreate it. And he had a lot of fun doing time doing it and like showing me all the art that he did for He-Man. So there's a lot of great fans out there that are willing to to contribute their their uh, skills and everything to make you know uh, to draw He-Man and to make this packaging awesome. So yeah, authentic, great stuff. Um, just want to do a little shout out to them. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, I think um, to your point, the revival and like the excitement around it is huge right Correct. now. I think Masters is one thing that, you know, 
Mattel is obviously extremely excited about. Um, the action figure line is doing, um, so what's been released is doing really great. Um, and there's a lot more to come. So happy to be a part of it. And there will also be um, a lot more masters content coming to you guys from uh, during the Comic-Con weekend. So be on the lookout for that too. All right. Sweet. All right. So let's shift gears um, into DC. So up next, uh, we have an exclusive featuring Warner Brothers, the iconic DC Batmobile. Um, as we know, the Batmobile is super important, not only to DC, um, but also to Hot Wheels. And I want to pass it over to Matt Burdico to elaborate a little on that. So um, DC and Warner Brothers and, and Batman specifically have been part of Hot Wheels for well over 15 years. And I don't have to tell anyone who's watching this how, you know, when you devote your life to, to working in vehicles as, as we have, uh, you, you think about vehicles as the center of everything. And in the world of popular culture, there's probably no vehicle or type of vehicle that's as, as iconic and famous and just awesome as, as the Batmobile. Um, it's so incredible. And, and if you think about what we do in Hot Wheels, a lot of what we do is inspired by those initial ideas of like, okay, this guy who dresses up as a bat, he's gonna drive a cool car. What would that car look like? And how it evolved over time is so fascinating to look at from both an entertainment and a, a car culture perspective. And um, our honor is to be able to, to create diecast versions of every single one of those Batmobiles. Um, but there's one Batmobile, uh, there's actually more than one, but there's one really important Batmobile that we've never done before, um, which is the very first Batmobile. Now, those of you who know, there's maybe some debate about what's the first Batmobile. Is it the first car that Batman was ever seen driving? Or is it the first car that was referred to as the Batmobile? Well, we have the answer. Um, so this is the first uh, Batmobile done for the first time ever by Hot Wheels. Um, and Brian is going to tell you about it. All right, thanks, Matt. Yeah, and so this year actually is a perfect opportunity to do this first Batmobile because as Matt um, described, the very first Batmobile that was called out as Batmobile was in 1941. So it's the 80th anniversary of the first Batmobile. Now there was a car, Prior to that, that was a, a red car that that Batman was seen in, but but never never specified to be Batmobile. So so we are calling this the very first Batmobile. This is one that I've actually wanted to do for a while. I think it's it's so cool. It's just so different from every other Batmobile. So um, I don't have a fancy um, sample and package yet, uh, even for this <laughs> one, uh, like Chris had for Motu. But uh, uh, but I do have a sample here that I can show you. And also with, you know, the Batman uh, coming out, you know, it's a perfect year as well to, uh, with all the focus being on, on Batman and Batmobile. So here we go. This is the 1941 Batmobile, the first Batmobile ever. It's basically, you know, it's a sleek red um, roadster. When I designed this casting, I was very much um, influenced by uh, the 1938 to 40 um, Shark Nose Grams. If I'm guessing correctly, I think the illustrators were inspired by when they did the comic because um, this car has a very distinctive nose that that slants forward. I actually um, exaggerated that slant to really get a sense of speed across that you see in that sort of key shot of the car uh, in the middle of the comic. This is, of course, from uh, Detective Comics number 48 which um, the cover date on that was February, 1941. The, the challenge though with this one was that pretty much the car looks a little bit different in every single panel of the comic. So, you know, how do you design something to look like a cohesive statement to represent that car from the comic and, and pull the right elements together to make it look right based on all those different views you see of the car where it's really kind of a different car. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> What I did is I, I, I took that one key hero shot, um, the one where it's kind of coming out from under the bridge with the moon in the background. Um, that's the one that most people are familiar with and, and really emphasize that um, view of the car. There's also like a little cowl behind the, behind the driver, if you can see here. Um, there's like a little raised cowl down there uh, behind Batman's head that you don't necessarily see in all the views, but thought that was an important element. And then, of course, the most important element to include is the, the bat on the hood. Um, and that's really, that's really the main imagery on, on the entire car that really speaks to Batman. 
Um, so that's that's a really important element to to incorporate. And then of course we've got bat, both Batman and Robin in there, which is a lot of fun. And the the level of uh, detail on the deco is just uh, phenomenal. It's, it's really fun to look at. So with the packaging, we really wanted to go back to Hot Wheels early days, you know, the very first packaging from Hot Wheels, the wide uh, blister package with the red and yellow, um, with that classic Hot Wheels flame. We thought it would be really fun to think of like, you know, what would it look like if we had done the original Batmobile in the first year of Hot Wheels in 1968? What, what would that look like in package? And so we had a lot of fun with that. Cool. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, let's move on to our third exclusive featuring uh, Lucasfilm with Star Wars. Um, this third item, before I even give anything away, I'm just going to kick it off to Sam. Um, and he's going to kind of talk about the inspiration for this item and what we have for you today. Thanks, Molly. So um, for so every year we try to think of an exciting Comic-Con exclusive for Star Wars, right? And this year is absolutely no different. This year we have a new character card design that uh, pays tribute to the first Star Wars comic book, which is a six-issue movie adaptation that was published in 1977. So I'm sure fans will remember that this iconic number one first issue uh, cover illustration by Howard Shaken. And I actually have uh, right here showing it. This is the actual cover. Um, so a lot of fans notice when they go to Comic-Con, they really recognize this cover. So iconic and everything. So, but what everybody probably doesn't know, me included, if you look at <laughs> Vader, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's, it's in green. So we did not know that because I have the original comic book. No, not original, but the original probably cost like, you know, thousands of dollars. I don't have that one, but I have to redraw one, the reissue one. And, um, it's not in green. They recolored it actually. Um, so it's really hard to describe. So I'm just going to do unboxing. So is it, is it okay if I do unboxing? Yeah, let's one? do it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've never Another, done unboxing before. We, so are we going to solve the mystery for why Darth Vader is green? Um, <laughs> I don't know. That would be Colangelo. Maybe you'll know something. Cause I, 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 don't, know. Know. I don't know. Well, I it happens a lot, here? right? It happens a lot where right. the person who's doing the coloring doesn't really know what they're doing. I mean, Star Wars was not Star Wars back then. I will tell you, my son mm -hmm. is uh, six and he's a huge Star Wars fan as as many six-year-olds are and and 40-year-olds. Um, and, and he was very bothered by the fact that if you hold it up there, Sam, a little bit, also yeah. that Luke has a red lightsaber. I mean, that's just, oh my God. As, that's <laughs> just right. as crazy as a green Darth Vader, if not more so. <laughs> that's, more um, that's a lot more So there's all sorts of weird right? stuff going on in that cover, man. It's some weird alternate universe. It's a lot of alternate universe. Here's the funny story. So I grew up in Malaysia. The only thing I got was like books, right? So my dad bought me this book. I still have it right now. It's a pocket book, uh, which has that whole six issue uh, collected into, you know, this, this little pocket book. And the thing is like in the inside, everything's black and white. So for me as a kid, I never, I didn't know that this comic was colored. So I always thought like this was originally came out in black and white. So I did not even know that. So this is, you know, oh my God, it's, it's torn. So it's probably lost some value. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll glue it back. It's okay. All right. Um, front. Uh, I'm going to open it up. Oh, just want to tell you the, the front part. It's like I try to make it look like a comic book. So you have like the barcode here and everything. So we pay tribute to it. So the back panel, you have a nice, beautiful art by Howard Shaken again. And um, really cool. You know, I'm glad that uh, Lucasfilm has a library that allows us to have a bunch of assets to, to get all this. So when we open it up. So this is the part in which I want Brian to help me out. So this, this is the actual packaging that looks like the comic book and where we trade pay tribute to it's like we have the character car. If you look really closely, look at how cool that is. That's so cool. Brian, talk, please tell yeah. us a little bit more about this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I you have was, the vehicle? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was really excited to get to do this car in green because you know, Darth is black, right? There's not a whole lot of variation you can do on the <laughs> right. Darth Vader character <laughs> car. Although I will say, you know, we've done several variations on it because, you know, as most people listening to this probably know, you know, Darth's suit is slightly different in each each episode, right? So, so we've we've replicated those various versions of the suit in the way we execute the Darth Vader car. So the cowling is different on each one. The, the buttons are even mm -hmm. different uh, in some cases. So, um, so we've done that. But you know, we're still working with a black car, right? 
So, um, you know, when we started talking about doing this comic cover, I thought, man, this is awesome. This is going to be such a cool opportunity because, you know, when you look at the comic cover, he almost he looks very sort of shiny and reflective. Mm -hmm. And so we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use our Hot Wheels Spectre Flame paint. So it's this really shimmery chrome like paint that, you know, harkens back to the early days of Hot Wheels. Um, The original Hot Wheels uh, back in 1968 were all Spectre Flame colors. Um, bright, vibrant colors with a chrome finish, right? So reimagining this Darth character car in this uh, really cool um, chrome green was just really exciting. And then layering on those reflections as well. So you not only do you get the bold sort of reflections of the chrome paint, but then you've got the harsh shadows and highlights as well actually decoed onto the, the casting. So it, it makes for a really, really striking piece, I think. I was oh, going to say, dare, dare say we take it out of the box okay. no <laughs> please this is the only one i have don't ask the packaging I, this is already broke to... okay i already lost a page in this one so i i i do not want to... wait brian do you have one yeah, do you, you have one take that out? yeah I, i'll I mean, sacrifice mine you might as well ask brian to hit his yeah. with a hammer you know don't ask the creator <laughs> yeah, to don't ask. their creation yeah please I don't know. It's my only one. Brian, sorry, you're on the chopping block. You got to take it out. I know. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll cry later. <laughs> right, oh, am I supposed to be doing this on screen? Here? Okay. I, Brian, I think I know somebody that can get you one in package <laughs> after all this is over. All right. Oh, I'm I should have said that. that. Oh, that's true. Okay, let's see. I'm having trouble getting There we go. All right. Here we go. You can see that nice reflective finish. That just looks yeah. amazing. So yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. So Brian, uh, underneath does the chassis what what year is on the chassis? So the year on the chassis is 2014. Exactly. So every Hot Wheels car, for for those of you who don't know, uh, on the chassis is the year that that car first came out, and we'll do different versions of it, different decos, but the chassis will have the first year. So 2014 Comic Con is when that car, the very first edition was at the 2014 Comic-Con and it was a Comic-Con exclusive um, in a cool lightsaber package. So, so you know, our very first Star Wars uh, Hot Wheels exclusive was, was that car, was the first edition. And here, I don't know how many different editions we've done, uh, several. Um, I lost yeah. track, yeah. But, but this one is <laughs> definitely, I would say, the most different from that very first one because it is green. De- definitely, yeah. And not only was it um, our first edition in 2014 Comcom, but we also, in in addition to the 164th, we actually unveiled our full size Darth Vader car in that year as well. Um, that was really, um, you know, a, a huge uh, statement at our booth in that year, and and really kicked off our our uh, Star Wars character cars. And it's it's been phenomenal to see how it's grown since then. You know, if we weren't all stuck at home and we were having Comic-Con in person, you know, the kind of thing that we would do, we would paint the life-size one green too, and we would have that in our booth. That, yeah. Seriously, absolutely. right? That would have been maybe, awesome. Maybe just a wrap, maybe a green wrap. It would yeah. be a wrap, yeah. We don't actually paint the cars, we wrap them. Thank you, yes, Matt gave for the technical correction. Uh, but yes, so... You know, we can't wait till till next year, hopefully, where we can do like really cool stuff in addition to the uh, to the awesome exclusives. Yeah. Uh, I just need to know what does the like the insurance like? How do I make sure that we have enough insurance so that I can actually drive one of these life size cars? Because <laughs> that's on my bucket list. As not going to happen, Molly. Okay, thanks. Thanks. thanks I'm also I'm trying just... to get on that list. The, vi- the visibility is not Long great. List. Visibility yeah. is not great on a Darth Vader car. I'll just yeah. say I designed it and I haven't even been able to drive it. So <laughs> so as you can see, guys, we have some incredible designers on the team, but not only are they designers, they are huge <laughs> fans and also big nerds, which is great. Um, so that is our third item. <laughs> um, and we have one last item that we were ending on today um, before we get into a lot of other great sneaks and Q&A is Marvel. Um, so in the past, we've done some incredible items for Marvel, and today is no different. Um, I am especially excited for this one. Um, so we will be celebrating Deadpool's 30th birthday this year for Hot Wheels Comic Con. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Chris to walk us through the product. 
for Comic Con this year for Marvel, we wanted to uh, celebrate Deadpool's Dirty Thirty. So this is one of actually one of my favorite Comic Cons that we've done in a long time. Um, I'm just going to show you because it's just too cool not to show. Um, so here is Deadpool on his sweet scooter on the way back from his birthday party. So you can see here on the back of his scooter, he has a little present and his 30 balloon. Uh, he's eating a nice little piece of cake. He's got his birthday hat on. We just wanted to have him celebrating the most Deadpool way possible. Uh, we have a really fun pose you can see here. Uh, Daniel Lopez did a really good job sculpting it up and really, you know, getting it to be very Deadpool-esque, but it's it's sweet. I mean, it's you. what else would you want from a Deadpool uh, item? I mean, he's really cool. Uh, we got the really fun real rider tires on here, so it's got an actual rubber on the wheels. Um, but yeah, here's Deadpool celebrating his 30th birthday. I wish that's how I celebrated my I 30th birthday. Everybody Not should. to age me, No, I mean, I did. I celebrated my 30th like this. <laughs> Deadpool mask and all. Well, but, I cake frosting smushed all over his. That's, yeah. I mean, I don't know how close I can get before it gets fuzzy, but yeah. Because you know, oh, yeah. why would he can't really eat? He has a mask yeah. on. Yeah. Why would he pick up his mask? He's Deadpool. Of course, he's trying to shove it <laughs> through the mask as opposed to lift the mask. That's great. But <laughs> what's really great about this item is, I mean, not only is the the Deadpool and his scooter amazing, the packaging execution on this is like above and beyond. Uh, if you have ever bought a Comic Con item or an exclusive from anybody. Hot Wheels takes packaging very seriously, as you guys have seen in our previous exclusive, and this one is no different. Um, and I know Matt Gabe went through a ton of explorations here. So Matt, if you want to elaborate on some of that and, and, and take us through your your brain when you were going through this one. Well, yeah, so this was, again, uh, first, thank you to Sam for uh, letting me work on this. Yes, I want this. Because um, like one, love Deadpool. Two, also a bit of a scooter aficionado myself. Yeah, so the, the, the fun part about the the Deadpool Comic-Con packaging was, you know, fun and a little bit of a challenging. All the other Comic-Con exclu exclusives had a little bit of like a history to them or they were based on something. This was just like, come up with whatever you want, make it fun and birthday themed. And it's like, well, that could be, that could be anything. So we, you know, to tie it in with a birthday, we had a, an idea that was like, we'll make a big piece of like a sheet cake and we'll have Deadpool on the scooter like riding through the icing and we can just have him like tire tracks right through it. It'll say like happy birthday and it'll be all screwed up. Um, and we had another idea that was like a basically like a little confetti exploding tube that you could like twist it and like Deadpool would pop out on his scooter and <laughs> you know that'd be fun. Um, or just a we had one that was like a, a platform box that looked kind of like a cake and it would, it would open up and just like a big present basically. Um, and so like, as we kind of got into it, we, you know, we're peeling the onion and found, it was like, all right, well, let's get extra immersive. What can we do for Deadpool? You know, we have some, you know, there's some Deadpool or some Marvel assets of him uh, operating his own food truck and selling chimichangas. It's like, oh, maybe he also has his own bakery and we can brand a cupcake box with Deadpool's bakery. So we'll call it, Deadpool's decadent desserts, a little bit of Wade in every bite. <laughs> Pretty clever stuff. So, um, yeah, so we, you know, we, we had a comic book artist that we work with, uh, like draw up a custom Deadpool that we used as like a, a rubber stamp to put all over this uh, very pink cupcake box. But, you know, Deadpool, probably not the most uh, clean guy. You know, he's the, the box is it's pretty messy. You know, he's, he's in the kitchen. He's like whipping things around. There's splats of chocolate. There's what looks like blood, but is actually just strawberry puree. Uh, very similar. Um, you know, there's splatters and stuff all over in like grease stains and, you know, you open it up and then we have a, uh, an actual custom, custom molded pink cupcake frosting that the scooter is packed out on top of. And then a, a custom wrap, like a, the cupcake wrap with a, uh, you know, Deadpool and Hot Wheels uh, logo that kind of it's like an overall print and it's great. And then that all comes in another box that looks like very hastily wrapped wrapping paper, just like with stickers and tape and there's tears all over it. It's very fun. Imagine it right here. It's about yay big. We're going to put a photo <laughs> in. You're going to love it. <laughs> when you sent them over to me and just showing me some of the ideas that you had been thinking of, I mean, I was 
one, I mean, obviously blown away. The creativity was awesome. But two, all I could think of was, oh man, if we do this confetti execution. That was like, that was kind of part of the thought was like, if you open this, you're going to be very unhappy and happy and unhappy at the same time, because it's going to make a mess. But well, custom, I got to buy like, another one. You got to buy another one. That was that was actually the real plan. Like, <laughs> you know, buy, buy two, one to open. Thank you. Well. <laughs> Yes, it looks so awesome. I think the details that you guys added is amazing. Um, Chris, if we can just take one last look at the product and see if we can see the smushes on Deadpool's face of the cake, that would be really cool. There he is with the pink frosting all over his mask, just eating away, driving on his scooter, without a care in the world. Party hat included. Yep. Happy birthday, Deadpool. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Deadpool. 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 Okay, awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, I hope everyone that is watching this is as thrilled about how these exclusives turned out. Um, I mean, every single year, you know, we brainstorm, we ideate around, you know, what, what could, what would our fans be excited about? What's something we've never done before? How can we push the limits? You know, our normal product development timeline on any die cast is 18 months. Um, and the fact that we're able to do this in 12 and honestly more like 10, if you ask one of our project managers, um, <laughs> but the execution is great. And the team really pulls these things together. And I think um, it just goes to show the passion behind them and how much fun we have. Um, but if nobody has anything else to add, um, I think we can move on to sneaks, which I know our fans are super excited about. So as a part of watching this panel, we want to thank you guys by showing you some cool stuff that we have coming this fall and early spring. Um, and first, I want to kick it off with Nintendo. So Nintendo, we have had this partnership with them for five years now, beginning in 2016. Um, the Mario Kart line was actually released in 2019. And most recently, this past month, we have released Hot Wheels Mario Kart Rainbow Road Raceway, which you can find online. It's an incredible, almost eight feet long track set. Um, comes with a King Boo diecast exclusive. Um, and we are super thrilled with how that turned out. But today, Chris is going to speak some of the new diecast carts that we have coming out. So Chris, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Thanks, Molly. So the uh, first little sneak peek we'll give you is a new cart and a new driver. Um, it's actually one of my favorites. It's Bowser Jr. And he's driving the Flame Flyer. It's uh, again, one of my favorite carts as well from Mario Kart Wii, but this one's really cool. Um, Bowser Jr. is always awesome. And the Flame Flyer itself has a really cool exposed engine, uh, sweet flame graphics. It's a, it's, a, it's a really fun one. Oh my God, Chris, he is so cute. I know I'm not supposed to say cute. I'm supposed to say cool, but he is adorable. Everybody loves Bowser Jr. It's okay. Yes. So the next sneak um, is actually a new addition to our, our glider line. It's Mario, and he's driving the pipe frame cart, which is new to the gliders, as well as the parachute glider. So this one's really fun. It looks just like a parachute. It's got a lot of different colors on it. Um, the pipe frame has been modified to, to work with all our gliders. So you can see it has that little fun snapping feature, so just like the other carts do. But uh, yeah, this is another one we're really excited about. Uh, the parachute glider is super iconic and and again the pipe frame is one of the most iconic carts ever i think uh it came out really cool as well yeah this one's awesome i think um to your point it's really incredible because we're able to swap in new characters and carts and gliders and this whole world that we've created the variety that we're able to put together it honestly feels like a real race where you can go and pick your character and pick your cart and you know, Hot Wheels is bringing all of these to life. It's been really, really fun the past couple of years putting all of this together. And I think the gliders just are so fun. I mean, they're incredible and it's just, just really amazing. So up next, we have Star Wars and I'm going to pass it over to Brian to take us through the new character car for this. So this was a really cool opportunity to do Boba Fett. Boba Fett's one of my favorite Star Wars characters. So um, I actually um, did the original Boba Fett casting um, back in, what was that, 2014? Um, and so when doing the new Boba Fett, um, you know, with his clean armor, we decided to base it on the same car, you know, cause it makes sense. He's still the same guy. Right. But we, we made some modifications to one it, it's, it's got a clean deco. So it's, it doesn't have all the sort of patina that the original had on. It's a, just a nice clean green. And then it's, it's got sort of his tunic represented with the fenders over the rear uh, wheels. Um, that's uh, an element we added to the to the new design. 
And uh, we've also um, lifted the car a bit and given him off-road wheels um, because he feels a little more rugged in, in the new entertainment. So we wanted to represent that with, with the design of the vehicle. And I actually have the, uh, I should mention, I actually have the uh, sample right here. Ooh. Oh, nice. All right. Um, Sneaks. This is actually a, a 3D print of the final, um, the final tooling model. So uh, this will give you a, a little idea of what it looks like there. That looks awesome. Yeah, and with Book of Boba Fett coming out, it's perfect timing for this character to enter into the character car world. Um, so super excited about that. And that looks awesome, Brian. Thanks for sharing. All right, up next, we have Marvel. And if you guys were able to see the amazing show WandaVision on Disney Plus most recently, if you can guess, we have two character cars that are also coming from this show um, that'll be released next month. And I'm going to pass it over to Brian to go over these vehicles. Oh, man, I, my family and I loved WandaVision so much. We watched it religiously every week. Um, this is, was one of my favorites. Um, and so to get to work on these cars, is, it was very cool. So first we have Wanda, the Scarlet Witch. The vehicle is basically inspired by her costume, including her headpiece. The headpiece is represented as a spoiler. And then I don't know if you can see it very well in that image, but there's red, translucent red parts um, sticking out there towards the bottom that actually um, sort of represent her powers, right? Uh, as you see them in, in WandaVision. And then we have um, Vision. Um, here it's like the white vision uh, version of him. Uh, and we've taken that vision casting and reinterpreted it with, the, with this new color scheme that really, really represents the way you see him in WandaVision. And it's just a really, really cool mixture of white and this sort of like soft um, metallic finish that um, is really striking. And then you get the, the little um, subtle hues of bluish greens in there as well that uh, really tops it off. I think it's it's really exciting to finally be able to do Scarlet Witch. As everyone knows, you know she she debuted in the MCU in I think 2015 in uh, Age of Ultron. And you know when we always talk about which characters to do as character cars, Vision was obvious. We did a Vision that year, but but Wanda was was a woman who wears kind of normal clothes. And so what do you kind of create a, a a car out of that? Like it's it's not like an action figure, you know, to to make a, a Hot Wheels car out of a character. There need to be identifiable cues. And even though she had really cool powers, there wasn't really enough in the way she looked in the in the show, in the movies, it was movies back then, um, to, to create a, a car out of. So now finally that she has worn her traditional or a version of her traditional costume, we're very happy to be able to, to include Scarlet Witch now that she has claimed her name in the character car line. And then we get to do a new version of Vision, which is super cool also. Yeah, yeah no, I was just about to say that we had a lot of fans that actually have been requesting um, that we do her. So I'm glad we were able to execute in such a really cool and unique way um, just in time for um, the awesome show on, on Disney+. Plus. Up next is Warner Brothers and everybody get up now. It's time to slam now. We got a real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. This movie just released as of last week and we are so thrilled as we've had Looney Tunes character cars within our Hot Wheels line before, but we are featuring even more characters straight from the film. We have had requests for, I will just hint at it, certain NBA players. And today I am happy to show you what we have in the works. Brian, pass it over to you. All right, so yeah, thanks Molly. We have three exciting new castings for Space Jam. I'm gonna start with Tweety Bird here. Uh, this is one that we've been wanting to do for a long time here at Hot Wheels. In fact, we have one member of our team, uh, our, our project manager, Deanna Noble, who's been obsessed with Tweety and every year for the past, I don't know, what is it, five years, Molly? Yes, um, five years at least. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's been begging us to do Tweety. So we finally uh, realized her dream and uh, Charlie Angelo. Wait, didn't, hey, Brian, sorry to interrupt you, but didn't she draw a sketch of what it would look like? <laughs> yes. yes, you're we right. We should put that right. sketch on the Sam, thank you so much for mentioning. I'm going to show the sketch on screen right oh, now. Everyone awesome. can see yes. this. Amazing sketch that Deanna actually drew up for us. You can see how <laughs> Brian's team took that inspiration into yes. the actual character car itself. Yes, absolutely. So, so Charlie uh, took that inspiration and created the car you see here, um, which is basically, you know, it's a little micro car, kind of, kind of based on a you know 50s era design, kind of. 
harken back to the time period that Tweety comes from. And it's just, it's adorable. It's, it's cute. I know we t- don't typically say cute in Hot Wheels, but, uh, but in this case, it is definitely cute. And then, uh, you know, in this, in this particular execution, Tweety's wearing his Toon Squad jersey. So we've got the colors from, from the jersey on, on the design as well, in addition to the orange tires to represent his orange feet. Next up, we have the brow. And um, the brow is, is like a cartoon version of Anthony Davis as a bird-like creature, right? So, so we wanted to take inspiration uh, from both Anthony and sort of the feathery creature. So you'll see throughout the, the vehicle design, there's sort of a, a feather texture uh, uh, that runs across it. And then we've got this really strong brow along the top of the windshield. And the vehicle is kind of inspired by like a, a long front engine car, like an AMG Mercedes or something like that. Yeah, so that's the brow. And then next up, and this is the, the most exciting one, I think. Um, this is one we've gotten a lot of requests for in the past. Um, we are doing... LeBron James as a character car. And I couldn't be more excited about this. So in this case, you know, we wanted to sort of take inspiration from a high-end um, supercar, hypercar, you know, something like a Bugatti Veyron or a Pagani or something like that, and incorporate LeBron's uh, attributes in there. So so um, you can see up front, we've got, and then, and then running across the side, we've got his distinctive facial hair is represented there with the, the lower chin spoiler. Again, uh, the jersey colors are reflected. So his Goon Squad jersey. And then the engine in the back is actually like the spherical engine, but it's uh, designed to look, you know, sort of represent a, a basketball. So that's kind of a fun little detail as well. And I think that's our three cars for Space Jam. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, you guys. I have to say that I was so thrilled and so pumped that we were able to do this with Warner Brothers. I mean, I think the car turned out great, Brian, but the fact that we're able to execute on a top tier, incredible goat of basketball, you know, him and Michael Jordan, of course, um, I think it just opened up character cars to a whole new world. And um, it's just one of my favorite vehicles that we've been able to execute on. So great job. Um, I think it turned out spectacular. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this can go. All right. Up next, we have Disney. And this will be coming out just in time for Halloween or Christmas, depending on how you look at it. Um, And lucky for us, we have Nightmare Before Christmas aficionado in-house marketer, Matt Brudico, who's going to walk us through um, the new characters. Yes. So, you know, we launched Disney character cars at the very end of 2018. And that first mix was really important. We wanted to get across the entire wonderful world of Disney. So we had Mickey Mouse. We had a character from Pixar. We had a villain. We wanted to make sure that we really represent the full spectrum. But one of the six cars was, to some people, an odd choice for literally the very first collection. And, and that character was, was Jack Skellington, uh, the Pumpkin King from, from Nightmare Before Christmas. And, you know, I personally was, was so excited about that car. It was the best-selling car, I uh, can tell you from looking at the, the data, which is very gratifying. But, you know, so we had that at the end of 2018, so I figured for sure the next Nightmare Before Christmas car would be coming in, you know, probably early 2019, you know, something like that. Um, and lo and behold, here we are, uh, almost three years later, finally adding to the world of Nightmare Before Christmas with not one but two new cars. Uh, first is a variant uh, of Jack, but not just a new deco with some new tooling of Jack as Sandy Claus, the misunderstanding of the name Santa Claus from the denizens of Halloween Town. And uh, it's just really, really fantastic um, how you see Jack uh, misguidedly takes over Christmas with his macabre ways. Can you tell that I'm a fan? Um, But also, (laughs) in addition to Jack, we have his partner in crime, Sally, who is uh, the most reasonable person in Halloween Town. And uh, she is represented Uh, as a Hot Wheels car for the very first time. So now Jack and Sally can uh, continue on. Uh, You know, something that's really special about Nightmare Before Christmas compared to almost anything else that we work with is it is just one movie. There's never been anything else made from it. And and that makes it really, really precious. There's only 90 or less minutes of content for all of Nightmare Before Christmas. And uh, but there's an entire world of characters. Am I going on a little bit too long about this? No, um, no it's perfect. So, it. yeah. Brian, anything to add from a design standpoint? Yeah, so um, so obviously with Jack, you know, we started with the same basic design, but we did a whole new tool for Santa Claus 
uh, to represent the Santa suit. His cap is is sort of integrated very cleverly into the design as a as the rear spoiler. And then I just love the way sort of his beard kind of wraps around the the engine, and it's all everything's kind of whited out. So so you get a really nice effect there. And I think it it it's a striking difference from from the original um, Jack Skellington car. Um, but obviously, you see the family resemblance there with Sally. She's actually, you know, kind of elegant, but a little rough around the edges, you know, and, and she's built out of these various parts, you know, from Mad Scientist Lab. So we wanted to kind of represent that in, in an automotive way. And, and, and the, the kind of car that that stood out to us as best representing that would be like a rat rod, right? Rat rods are just kind of like cobbled together and and um, they're rough around the edges and everything. And so but but we wanted to do like a, a unique take on a rat rod where it, it's based on a very luxurious, ex, um, elegant car, like a, an old Art Deco era, you know, um, maybe Delahaye or, or Bugatti or something like that, um, but then done up in this sort of rough way. And, and Dwayne Vance, our designer on that one, just knocked it out of the park, I think. You really, you really get the vibe of Sally with the car. Yes, and as you can see, Matt, there are plenty of other fans that I'm sure will be super excited to see Santa Jack and Sally hit the pegs at the end of this year. Um, I'm sure you'll be grabbing a few yourself, maybe? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> awesome, okay. And rounding out Disney, we have one more vehicle to share with you. And this one I am so thrilled to share. Some of you may have seen it already, um, but we know that Pixar likes to put some Easter eggs into their films and this one is no different. Um, we are bringing you the Pizza Planet truck in a very unique and interesting way. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Brian to walk us through. Yeah, thanks, Molly. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, as as Molly said, you know, uh, the Pizza Planet truck is kind of becoming this iconic Easter egg throughout most um, Pixar films. And one particular execution of it is, is really, really cool. And, and that's how it appears in Brave as this sort of like wood sculpture, right? And you see it there on the package um, execution. And it was a really fun challenge to, to try to... Um, recreate that wood uh, look in our diecast car. So the way we've done that is, you know, we applied uh, uh, direct inkjet printing to, to get that wood pattern and then and, and created that sort of monochromatic uh, wood colored uh, look to the vehicle. And it's just a lot of fun. The, the, the final execution is just um, uh, really great. I think I, I just love how it came out. It's yeah. not many places where you can get a full diecast version of a wooden thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. An amazing opportunity, folks. <laughs> it wasn't just Matt whittling these away over at the plant. It's <laughs> yeah, our first plan was to just carve them, and then we realized that would take too long, so we decided to make them at the factory. Like Everybody a, was going to have to carve five to ten trucks themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see. I mean, the detail into this is so spectacular. Again, like I know some of you may have seen this, um, but we were, we, we thought it deserved a moment in the spotlight for sure. All right. Thanks guys. So we went through the exclusives. We've showed you guys some sneaks and now we're doing Q and A. So these questions have literally come straight through our Hot Wheels channel. And we're here to answer you with the best of the best marketers and designers on the call. Um, so first up from at Riz Toys, why and when did Mattel include Hot Wheels into Comic-Con? Uh, Matt, do you want to take this one? Um, so turns out the answer to that question is 2005, uh, where Hot Wheels made its Comic-Con debut um, in honor of the launch of Acceleracers. And uh, some of you may know exactly what that is and are clamoring for the return of Acceleracers. We hear you. We know that you want Acceleracers to come back. Um, and others, others of you probably don't know what that is. But it was a huge um, uh, animated series all around uh, Hot Wheels um, that was super cool and awesome. Um, and we've been at Comic-Con off and on since then, and for the last you know decade or so, every single year, and have had really, really cool um, exclusives every year, major uh, things to see and do. And it really comes to uh, Hot Wheels, of course, mainly we are an automotive brand. We celebrate car culture uh, as the foundation of what we are. But we also are, are really a reflection of pop culture as well, and that's a, a huge part of, of, of what we are and what we represent. Uh, we've talked a lot about the Batmobile, um, you know, uh, character cars is, is a huge way that we 
you know, represent um, uh, all the different amazing uh, characters from popular culture. Um, but really any vehicle that has appeared, whether it's the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters or the Back to the Future time machine or uh, James Bond's Aston Martin, uh, we love bringing all these vehicles uh, out and really celebrating them throughout the year, but mainly at Comic-Con each year. And it's something that we really look forward to. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Actually, talking about that first uh, Comic-Con that Hot Wheels appeared takes me way back because that was not only the first uh, year I attended Comic-Con, but my actual first appearance on a Comic-Con panel. So since I, I um, was part of the team that developed Acceleracers, um, I got to, a chance to be on the panel for Acceleracers at that Comic-Con. And it was a, it was a really exciting uh, opportunity. And I, too, would love to see Acceleracers come back. It was such an awesome, awesome show. All right. So next question at Ian Couch 77 asked, when can we expect a car list for Hot Wheels Unleashed? Well, Ian, I not only can offer you a car list, I can actually show you a brand new, never before seen trailer. So if we can go ahead and roll the tape and show that right now. The most iconic, most wanted, and raddest cars. The very best from the Hot Wheels universe. And when you think you couldn't ask for more, well, there's more. And more. And more. Best collection ever. Coming September 30th, 2021. Hot Wheels Unleashed. Pure racing fun. Wow, that was awesome. And not only that, like I said, we also have the car list to share with you. And I'll go ahead and let Matt Game do that. All winners. No losers in the bunch. That's an amazing list. All right. And next question from at Hot Wheels underscore headed. How can I become a Hot Wheels designer? Chris, do you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. So there's lots of ways. Um, a lot of us have different backgrounds. Like myself, I'm from the toy industry. Uh, Brian is from the automotive industry. Uh, you just have to have a real passion for toys and vehicles. And, you know, I can give you Brian's phone number. I'll flash it right now. You can give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> open spots. But uh, no, yeah. Again, just, you know, have a passion for, for toys and, and vehicles. And, you know, there's openings all the time. And you might get lucky. We all did at one point or another. Are there any Are there any schools that are yeah, like that I said? You tend cover, to churn out toy designers. I mean, on the toy world, it, there you can go to FIT, where like where I went, there's Otis, and I know for for Brian's world, you want to chime in with some of the yeah stuff. yeah. So from the automotive side, you know, um, uh, some of the more well known automotive design programs like Art Center College of Design, uh, CCS, uh, Cincinnati, um, those are all uh, great schools. Um, but there's a lot of other schools as well. So as long as you have a strong, um, you know, I'd say design background and strong understanding of automotive design uh, for the car side, um, that's that's all it takes. And passion, like like uh, Chris said. Awesome. Thanks, Chris and Brian. Um, yeah, that sounds awesome. I think um, it, it definitely is led by that passion, right? Like I have seen, I mean, when I first started at this company, I was truly in awe of the history and the richness that some of the designers bring to the cars and, and their love for it is like unrivaled of any other, anything I've ever worked on in my whole life. So um, it's really neat to have them, you know, have you guys walk you through the car designs, um, where it comes from and, and just, you know, the fact that you're able to make it into this compact 164 scale, I think is just unbelievably impressive. Next up, we have um, a question from at so underscore Philip. Is there a set number of fantasy and real castings that are targeted for each new year, as in new castings? Uh, Matt, you want to take this? Sure, I'd be happy to. So, honestly, the answer is yes. Um, and and you know, I assume fantasy means kind of designed by the Hot Wheels team, and real maybe means licensed from somebody. Obviously, we license some fantasy cars, like the Batmobile. Maybe it doesn't exist in real life, but um, we do have a, a, a ratio that we do. Um, we release a poster every single year, so you could count them 
and you could see what it is and you'd realize it's pretty consistent year over year, which is about 65% um, licensed, meaning they're licensed from automotive companies or entertainment companies. Uh, and then about 35% that are completely original designs from uh, the Hot Wheels team. Now, obviously the original designs from the Hot Wheels team could be more fantastical or more realistic. Um, and we have, you know, our points of view on, on that as well. Um, but, you know, the thing about Hot Wheels is everyone finds a car that they want. Um, and, you know, I, I know everybody probably thinks some of the cars or most of the cars we make are awesome, but some of them are not for them. But there's other people who think the cars you like are not that great and they like other cars. So it's a really awesome balance and a really uh, fun thing for us to do. I'm not going to say that we get it 100 percent right every year. Um, but it's a huge part of our job uh, throughout the organization to make sure that the mix of cars that we're presenting every single year uh, is, is going to make the biggest number of people happy across the world. Great. And that wraps us up for today. I want to say thank you to Matt and Brian and Chris and Matt and Sam for joining me as we give you your Hot Wheels fix for San Diego Comic-Con at home panel discussion today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and continue to explore all of the great entertainment pieces that will be um, showcased this weekend and snatching as many exclusives as you possibly can. So we are signing up for Hot Wheels. Thank you all so much and cheers to another successful Comic-Con.